the future of data storage. Humanity is producing data at an exponential rate, prompting scientists to seek out storage systems that can keep up. Data is commonly archived using magnetic tape, which can hold as much as a terabyte per roll up to 30 years. But conventional storage capabilities may not be sufficient for long. Microsoft is now looking to DNA as a means to store digital data. DNA is more dense and can hold a quintillion bytes of information in one cubic millimeter. In its demonstration project in 2016, the company managed to encode 100 literary classics, or roughly 200 megabytes of data, into the four bases of DNA. But with the technology still in the early stages, converting digital bits into DNA code remains both slow and expensive. Microsoft aims to have a DNA storage system in place for at least one application in three years. The ambitious end game, however, is for DNA to be the go-to for data archiving. Say no to safe spaces on YouTube. Support Tomo News at patreon.com slash Tomo News. Here's more on advances that have been made in data storage. Microsoft successfully tests underwater data center. Gaming enthusiasts have long been water cooling their PCs for optimum performance, something Microsoft recently put to the test on an industrial scale with a subsea data center. In 2015, Microsoft's Project Natick deployed an experimental prototype vessel off the coast of California. It consisted of a single rack of servers and pressurized nitrogen, sealed inside a white steel capsule with heat exchangers attached to the hull. Named the Leona Philpot, the vessel was submerged 30 feet into the Pacific Ocean where the waters acted as a natural coolant. To better understand how to operate in an undersea environment, the researchers measured pressure, humidity, motion, and other conditions. The trial ran successfully for 105 days between August and November of 2015. Project Natick's next step is to build a new system three times as large, designed to be left underwater for five years at a time. With the project still in its early stages, no one can know for certain when Microsoft will be coming out with a viable product. But judging from potential alone, the future of data centers could very well be under the sea. Microsoft plans underwater data centers. Data center servers are wonderful things. They make the world go round. But keeping them cool enough to function really, really turns up the electricity bill. It's because of this that Microsoft is looking at placing its servers underwater. Last year, Microsoft sent a server inside a steel hull 30 feet below the Pacific Ocean. Along with pressurized nitrogen to cool computer chips, the temperature at the ocean floor helped keep the server cool. The experiment ran for 105 days between August and November of 2015. That hull was named Leona Philpot after a character from the Halo video game series. According to Microsoft, last year's experiment was powered by a land-based power grid, but they hope to develop other power sources. The company believes that renewable resources such as tidal energy could power underwater data centers. Microsoft eventually hopes to develop underwater data centers with a two-decade lifespan, deployed over five-year periods where computer hardware is replaced at the end of each deployment. The company is working on the next phase of the research, which they say includes a vessel that is quadruple the size of this one and will hold 20 times as much compute power. But what about the sea life, some of you may be asking. Funnily enough, Microsoft says they began to inhabit the system. Humans, get ready to go bionic. Japanese tech giant Panasonic has unveiled a prototype data transmission system that uses the human body to send information. The data is sent through a radio field on human skin. The technology is safe as the currents don't flow inside the body. A person with a transmitter can send data such as a color code to a lamp with a sensor. The lamp can then change its color to match the code. Panasonic predicts the data transmission system could have more practical uses in the future, such as exchanging contact information via a handshake or unlocking doors with just a touch. The technology is currently too big for practical use, but Panasonic is confident it can make the device as small as needed if there is demand for the system. Say no to safe spaces on YouTube. Support Tomo News at patreon.com slash Tomo News. Google Ships are here. 
After developing self-driving cars, Google is set to bring its innovation prowess to the seas with a novel new ship propulsion system that uses kite energy. Google first delved into marine technology in 2009, mounting computer data centers on barges and using seawater to cool them. The tech giant's most recent innovation incorporates this technology with an airborne wind turbine, or AWT, that connects to the ship via an electrically conductive tether. The windmill-like kite consists of a number of turbines mounted on a rigid wing and is meant to fly over water at high altitudes. The AWT has two functions. It can be powered to steer the vessel, but can also generate power by harnessing wind energy. The ship itself is also capable of producing its own fuel by drawing out carbon monoxide and hydrogen gas from seawater, refining and then converting it to ethanol. With a sustainable fuel and electricity source, moving data centers across the seas will not only be cost effective, but also environmentally friendly. For now, Google is remaining mum on this exciting new technology, despite successfully acquiring the patent for the AWT in September.